Greetings. This is a rehash of the 2019 convention discussion on the benefits of SAM for grass players and the U.S. Beach Soccer National Championship discussion. In Chapter 1, we'll be focusing on the myths and what the pros say. FIFA calls beach soccer the celebration of the beautiful game. Go Ishikawa, who is of Tawichi fame and trained as a child with Marco Echeverri, has said, of all types of football one can compete, beach soccer more than any other by far takes the most technique and is without a doubt the most tactical and strategic one can play. So basically, in some ways, others have expressed that not all talented grass players can play well in the sand, but all talented beach players can play well in the grass. But from the standpoint of beach soccer worldwide and the growing of the game, this is what they have to say. Once upon a time, there was a wonderful world full of beautiful beaches. In this world, there were many nations, each with its own team. The amazing thing is that the players weren't enemies, they were friends. They loved each other and respected each other. The truth is, this place is closer than you think. A world of strength, passion, friendship. In this world, everybody's equal. No matter your ability, your colors, or where you come from. This is the world of beach soccer. And you can be a part of it. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Tygo Sullivan. I've been doing Pro-Am Beach Soccer since 2008. And I've been involved in producing beach soccer events since 2004. I'm a former national team coach. Was involved with two, uh, two CONCACAF championships and as well as a third place in CONCACAF and have been able to uh, be involved in two World Cups where we faced eventual champions and finalists. Um, my other background obviously has been pretty uh, international in respects of Latin America, Europe, and also in Asia now. I've been coaching for over 25 years. I've seen what works and what doesn't, and I've become more and more convinced that sand is something that everyone needs to be paying attention to. The events that we've done so far as pro and beach soccer have uh, mostly been on the West Coast, but in recent years we'll be celebrating our fourth year in Pompano Beach, Florida, as well as Atlantic City. And we have had events going irregularly uh, in both Bali and Singapore. Uh, we're currently working on a number of other initiatives, which you can see there, and uh, we look at expanding throughout the next several years. Our mission as an organization is to build partnerships in the communities, teaching the best practice, and really trying to just expand the sport and uh, create a, a scenario where beach soccer can grow both in the United States, North America, and internationally. Now, what we really want to be concentrating on here, what this chapter is about, are the myths behind beach soccer. Reasons that we've heard that why coaches decide that they're either not going to train in the sand or they're not going to play in beach soccer tournaments or just a variety of other things. Um, the first one that we hear the most is no time. Um, the, the, the events are in the summer. This is when we want to take players and give them time off. Um, we want them to be working on strengthening and conditioning but not really working on soccer. Um, that's counterintuitive to what we're talking about here considering that uh, beach soccer is and training in sand is the way to be able to actually perform at a higher level in quicker amount of time, which later chapters will go into. Um, the, we've heard ridiculous things like the kids don't have enough time and they don't want to do it, which is crazy because you know anyone that has been to a beach soccer tournament or has trained and played in sand with their players, they, they come away knowing that it's like the most fun thing that they could possibly do with them. Everyone works harder, they try harder, it's a double bonus. We're going to go in later on why you don't even need a, a beach. Uh, we performed clinics at indoor beach volleyball facilities in Green Bay, Wisconsin in the middle of winter this year. And, you know, you don't, all you need is that. 
just a beach volleyball facility and you are able to train on every aspect of the things that we'll be discussing. I had one person that I had, res that had pretty great respect for it told me that um, it doesn't do anything and improve their game in the grass where I just sort of laughed at this scenario because um, whether it is teaching your players how to run in high heels, which automatically allows them to be higher on their toes when they return to grass, or working on the skills that are necessary of being able to lift the ball out, uh, developing greater uh, three small toe capabilities and building strength in areas of being able to hit the ball at the outside of your foot better just by playing the sport. The reality is, is that most coaches have no idea how to coach it. But before I go into that, I do want to mention the one that we really truly hear the most, which is we don't want to do it because we're worried about our players hurting their feet. Like a couple centimeter or millimeters of leather or rubber or these days recycled plastic and a sock or are going to protect the foot in any way. The idea of broken toes is also something that needs to be addressed because it's something that can be improved upon 95% if a player is taught how to actually make a fist with their foot as though you were going to hit the ball with a closed clenched fist instead of an open foot, which we mostly teach our players to do. We don't teach our players to clench their toes inside their boot. But when you go to the sand, you need to clench your toes, and therefore when you kick through the sand, it doesn't have the drag effect. Because the main injury that we're talking about in, in beach soccer about coaches are really, at the end of the day, complaining about is turf toe. And it's not exactly a broken toe. Um, if you're going to drag your toes, then it's going to be a scenario where you may be able to get that, but it's easily corrected. But we'll get into that some more later. What we really kind of want to do in this chapter is really talk about what the pros have to say. You know, Romario, who, um, of anyone of my age or, you know, mid-30s, is going to remember the 1994 World Cup, and Romario was the star. Um... He is a prolific beach volleyball or beach foot volley player. Even I can slip up once in a while. And he's someone who actually, when the World Cup was taken over by FIFA, played in the 2005 inaugural Beach Soccer World Cup, FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup. There have been world championships going on for decades. Now, the thing was, is he may have been one of the main guys with star power in that first Beach Soccer World Cup, but this man... Eric Cantona, the king of Manchester United, was also there as a player coach for France. Eric Cantona is such a huge proponent of beach soccer that he literally bought, yes, I did say buy, the rights of beach soccer from the French Federation. He now, with his brother and the area in Marseille, run beach soccer for the country of France. And as, he, as you can see it, this is something that he truly believes in. And if anyone has kept track of this amazing individual, uh, he is not one short of words and of opinions. So by him putting so much time, energy, and really his own money uh, into beach soccer, it should say something about one of the greatest players ever to play for Manchester United. Danny Alves, uh, we've seen him come from Brazil to Sevilla, then to Barcelona, over to Juventus, and now is at PSG with his great friend Neymar, um, has stated that he owes his talents to beach soccer, that you know playing in the sand gave him the technique that required him to grow as a player and to be able to play at an international level. Now, Neymar, as you can see, is playing in the sand there and is continuously pictured playing foot volley with Danny Alves. So, um, if we think about the Brazilian players of some of the greatest of all time, they came from areas that there was beach. So, they had the combination of not only like Ronaldinho of having beach and futsal and grass that has produced the type of technique and skills that you can only find in players up to this point from Brazil because of the fact that they invented beach soccer and they've been playing it for decades. Now, it's not just the players and uh, former players that are considering the benefits of beach soccer and of training in sand. All of the major clubs are doing it at this point. 
I was taking kids to Real Madrid for 10 years from 1998 to 2008, and when they changed over to Villa Vedos, which is the Real Madrid city near Barajas, near the airport, they built a beach soccer field and a football league court right next to their facility, where the main team practices every day. Now, in addition to that, the physical trainer here from Bayern Munich has written an article literally talking about how they have moved away from gyms and have moved away from weight training so that they are not isolating muscles. They're getting a more complete workout and training by having Bayern Munich working in the sand. They're literally not, they're moving away from you know, what we see in many colleges where everything is like weight room and bulking and, and you know, building up muscles and going through these physical type of uh, routines, which are isolating muscles, whereas they're literally talking about sand being the opportunity of building players to their most elite height without spending as much time in the gym or on the weights. Whether we're talking about Bayern Munich, or here, Iniesta working at Barcelona, or Dick Gareth Bale, who is using the sand at Real Madrid, or as we'll see later with Chelsea, or PSG. You know, most of the most elite clubs in Europe have already gone here. You know, just the clubs that we're looking at, or I just mentioned, are some of the top clubs in all of Europe.